What's going on YouTube? Well, we're going to look at cars today. Got a few to look at. All the major brands this time. I'm going to have the Kaido House, another Kaido House. We're going to have Auto World Greenline M2. So let's get started. But first, let's sprinkle in just a little bit of Hot Wheels. Yeah, well, we'll say Mattel because we also have a Matchbox. Sometimes when I see a casting punching above its weight class, we'll say. I want to share it. I like this a lot. This Bronco is sweet. It's close to 164 scale. Um, but it's a regular uncut fender, completely stock Bronco. So these are sweet. I'm sure that Matchbox has plans to do these in a bunch of colors. So they're, they're awesome. Chrome base on this one so they can have the chrome bumper. And this, I think they put a year on this. Yes, yeah, 1970. So these went to 77. You know, so they had a long run. Pretty cool. You get a V8 in these. You can get stick shift. You can do all that cool stuff. A lot of them are inline six, but <clears throat> V8s are on them. And then they can do the half cab. And make these little pickups. So they're they're cool. They're really cool. Okay. A little Bronx put down on the side and one more this this is the new um, pop culture Aston Martin for uh, James Bond but this is awesome I'm gonna wait on the mini GT line you probably most of you know about coming out with all the James Bond cars well this one is really close they did a comparison you know this probably is one of the better examples of uh, the Vantage Pretty much this is the Vantage, isn't it? It's called a V8, but yeah. It's got great proportion. You know, the Johnny Lightning one's kind of goofy looking. Never bought it. And then there's uh, some other brands too, but... I love the, uh, the three-piece construction. So they have the base, and then they put the chrome plate in. But it's not part of the interior. The interior's another color, so... This is a really nice looking car. Good proportion vehicle. You can see that the, the detailing is done very well. It's got the exhaust. Of course it rolls good. So I have a huge collection of Hot Wheel Premium. I just don't put them on camera because, well, they're all over the place really. So everybody knows about these. But this one is worth uh, giving a shout out to. All right, let's move on. Well, this is uh, this is catching up on some Auto World too. So these cars, I haven't seen this on the pegs. This is twenty twenty three release four, and uh, it's the wagons. I've seen them jump ahead, uh, but uh, I think this is also the one. Yeah, so the big Rams again. This set it really hasn't been out, so I got. We're gonna look at both of these real quick, the wagons. So I gotta have these. So I did find a two for a deal where these are pretty cheap. I mean, considering I mean I wasn't paying what you can pay at Walmart, but it wasn't exorbitant. So the other so basically all these other ones I have not seen. This is a really important set, uh, just because it has a Celica and which I also want really bad. Again, I don't know why it's been skipped. But for some reason, I've never seen them out in, in any of the stores that carry it. So hopefully we find them again because we definitely need another one. These carded. So they did an update with uh, the 70 front end. So if you go back to the 69 Kings, what it had the square front end. And they did some casting updates to it. I'll get an example of one down. recent re-release of the Kingswood. We'll do this. So this is based on the one that came out, you know, in 17, whatever, 16. And if you look at this closely, you see the wood grain has the trim, but it's molded into the casting, so you have that 3D effect. You know, the trim is actually raised. You can kind of see it better there. So, that goes along the whole car. And you can see how level it is with this back window. 
Now if we look at these cars, it kind of has an upswept configuration. I have not referenced the real photo. I don't know if there's an issue with that or if it goes like that for real. There is no more relief. It's just all smooth. So you don't feel the trim line anymore. Understandable. I'm pretty sure that the base plate is identical. I have not tested the size up front, but I'm guessing it's the same. The Kingswood Estates are great. You can see the difference in that. That's the biggest difference. The tail treatment, tail panel, same. These are the old Chevy 3 uh, tri-tail lights. Now, again, you can see the difference in the relief. So this casting has, you know, would say more detail to it. But it's not bad, uh, and they switch to the wire wheels. I don't. Ever, I don't think they've ever used the wire wheels on this. They've always used those dog dishes. And here's the turquoise car. Just really good looking vehicles. Um, they have a the roof rack again. They have to mold the plastic, so it's a little thick looking. That's all right. And there's our big block. Typically 400 big big motors in this because the, these ones the estate the kingswoods would they would be the most option cars so they usually had the biggest engines in them and people would use these not just to be a family car but they tow with them and do all that stuff so they really were the suvs of the day so we've looked at these castings but they're awesome um Auto World rarely paints the interiors on cars. They're usually always black. But um, if you have multiples, hopefully I get a few more of these. I'm going to get these interiors painted because it just adds that extra level to these cars when they have the interior painted. I got one of these. I think I did a red interior on what we looked at in one of the older videos. All right, we'll put these away over here. Just awesome cars. Hope to get the Rams and the and the Supras, of course. I just haven't got them online. The Supras sold out pretty quickly. I'm guessing, you know, eventually we'll see that release four out on the pegs. They can't have just disappeared. Didn't all go to the online retailers. You know, I don't think I missed. I don't think I missed it because. You know, I didn't even see the galaxies out. So usually, one of the peg, one of the one of the things would be a peg warmer for at least longer than the other castings. But I really haven't seen any piece of parcel of it. Okay, catching up on uh, twenty twenty four release one, I found another set of the B version. So we have the gray F one fifty Sport or Lariat or whatever it is in the gray. So now I found the red. So we'll just box, we'll just take this apart here. Let everybody see me open this. Some facts for you, and they call this um, Magna. So it's like a deep maroon. And then I'm also gonna unbox the the Challenger multicolor because I found another one of those. They seem to be hanging around. It seems like you can get those. I've been um changing my opinion on this i'm just using the cards now i'm not going to worry about keeping the plastic part of the blister anymore it saves a little bit more space and i can still have the the card i i like having the documentation of the cards on these releases so they just I just keep the card and they stack up and uh i have the card art and all that it's a good reference for these castings so there it is. We've looked at this before on the other Fords. Every time I get one of these, um, we I had the Rams, but <clears throat> we'll find those. New front end core treatment. So they revised the casting with new wheels and that black interior. It's got a cool look to it. Rolls nicely, of course. These are the pickup trucks, so auto rolls, since they are so, like, into 164 scale. When they get these late model trucks, they're huge. And they're heavy. So they're they're fun to have. The Silverados are awesome, too. And I got pretty much all those. So there's our Ford. And now, let's look at that Multicolor Challenger. I think that'll be cool. So we'll get this opened up. Let's look at it, actually, out of the package. 
So I have one sealed now, so it'll go with my uh, 64 Barracuda multicolor car. I just wish Auto World had, you know, I always complain about this, but I wish they put that quarter window in the in the casting. Bothers my eye. Well, maybe let this auto zoom is not very good. Paint chip. I think they did it for a lot of the cars. Not just that Barracuda that we had. I think there was a famous Cuda or Challenger picture, like 70. They did this. This is cool. I'm glad I took this out. I just wanted one of these with the color stripe on it. Let's take a look and, and then see. I think they actually do the metallic on it. This is Tampo work. This is not them painting this, unfortunately, but it pretty much gets the job done. It needs the stance correction. Tires are all messed up. And it seems like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, this just needs to be adjusted. Let's see if we can get the hood open. It's stiff. So it looks the base the base coat on this car is white, which makes sense. So if you were to take rubbing or not rubbing, if you were to take acetone or um, nail polish remover, that kind of thing, it would come off. So this almost feels like it's a transfer. Some of these I've noticed, like when they do the weathered cars, you'll see these bubbles right here. So that means that that's like a film. So like a kind of like a transfer to, um, decal that's on model kits. You can see there it rips a little bit. So I'm thinking it's more like that kind of process than the printing process. But the weathered cars, you see the same effect, like the with the rusting and things like that, and the the patina. It's the same type of treatment, and when these cars come out of the package, they have like a stickiness to them, and it's kind of like, I think it's like a, you know, rubber, resin-based, or whatever they call it, plastic type of compound, and like when it gets out of the package, usually it, it cures a little bit harder, so it's not as sticky, but I don't know if anybody else notices that when they take them out. Okay, let's take a look at some more vehicles. All right, um... Let's do some uh, M2. We got some M2 and then a green light. Let's take a look here. Look at this. This is really cool. So, well, we found another Blazer. I was had my pick of the letter. I found the, the place put out three uh, fresh ones. So I was able to get a couple of these. Great looking Blazer. I haven't done anything to it yet. But uh, just so everybody can see the updated color scheme. This one was really clean. It's got a nice look to it. I haven't glued the top down yet. I usually put a dab of glue on these just so they stay. And then, um, you know, they still lets me rip them off if I want to do something to them. Windshield frame is pretty good on this one. Remember that one of the last ones we looked at it was missing a chunk of metal up there so hopefully the tooling isn't getting jacked up you know they've made a lot of runs of these blazers so hopefully uh, the tooling gets impaired they're fixing it along the way but typically there's flashing on m2 in terms of the parts you can see the headlights for instance i go around on there with a hobby blade and then you just kind of cut that off and you can push these back in this in the bucket the headlight bucket and they'll fit flush for, for right now you can see how it kind of ruins the look a little bit but that's fixable it's not hard these are tiny things making a six dollar eight dollar car whatever these are you know wherever they are by you that's going to happen it's not the end of the world. These are all things that can be fixed. As long as the engineering of the casting is sound, um, well, most of the times the vehicles are just sitting funny because of flashing in areas like the wheels, the chassis, where the chassis attaches to the body. 
those all could have a little pieces in the way making things look crooked and i've noticed you know if m2 if there's a car out of whack and i take it apart and, and get rid of all those hard edges put it back together they're fine so they originally planned on making the car look true and level <laughs> but uh, it doesn't always work out that way at the manufacturer so this one is one of 9,000 pieces. You know, if they call out the limited edition stuff with numbers, I usually put it in the description below. So just keep looking down there for cars. And then you could look up the car that's listed in your favorite search engine or wherever you shop. And you should be able to find the vehicle you're looking for on, on the video today. Here's another one that kind of surprised me that I wanted it, but caught my eye. Sometimes I buy cars like that. You know, I don't know, at least know all what's coming out. I try to know most of it. But it's nice finding surprises here along the way. A lot of times you're so tuned into what's coming out. You're always looking for the new stuff. But it's nice to see, you know, like it used to be. Kind of just would visit the pegs and, and see what caught your eye. But you didn't always know what was coming down the road. Now, now they kind of tease everybody with... You know, oh, what's coming up? We got this new stuff, and it kind of creates a gotta have it scenario. This is one of those vehicles I just didn't pay attention to. They made tons of these short wheelbase buses. Um, I just like this color scheme. They don't roll at all, really. Um, I have not torn into this, uh, but it will roll. <laughs> we'll figure it. We'll figure it out. But right now, it's touching. This lowered tires and stuff is touching this um, seat, so they don't. But I'll I'll fix that. It's not hard. But it's really cool. It's like a peach pink, so really sweet little truck. It might look good with the hot rods in there. It's kind of like a funny little vehicle. It would be kind of fun to have a little something like this at the car show to drive around in, <laughs> wouldn't it? Okay, a little bus, and they got great detail, good dash. Look at that steering wheel, two spoke. So that early uh, bus. One more M2, and then we're going to do a green light. This is sweet. This one was another car that is going to be pretty pretty collectible. This is a stock Regal Turbo T. Last year, 87 for Regal uh, rear-wheel drive G-body car. 3.8 sequential port fuel injection uh, turbo. So this is the last updated 3.8 turbo for the GM program. Um, and this one is a non-Grand National spec. This car came with the awful uh, M2 wheels and tires. So, well, actually, the M2 wheels were re retooled, so I did fix them. So what I had to do is put green light tires on it. They're too skinny. Basically, the tires they're using were set up for, like, the 50s and 60s cars. Once you get into the 80s, maybe late 70s and, and forward, you can't use that profile tire. It's like you're putting bias plies on a, a late model car. It doesn't look right. They're too tall and narrow. So this has a little bit fatter tire. It's kind of the best one right now. I know that Greenlight's tread is a little aggressive. But that's the way the car should look. Uh, unfortunately, it's got like some extra paint there that I don't want to take off. And I had to backspace this. So you can see how much room they leave for the fat tires. This is a stock ride height chassis. We also looked Grand National last time. That's I haven't played with it yet. Um, but on the lower chassis with the GNX wheels... This one's just a standard turbo Regal uh, two-tone car. So the T-type cars uh, would usually carry this look, but they would chrome. So everywhere normal Regal would be chromed, it would be chromed. I think they still did the eight-cylinder as well. So they had a V6, turbo six, and then the um, eight-cylinder. And I think they're still using 307s. Just can't be sure. It was that or the five liter. I thought the three oh seven was was in these cars at this point, but I could be wrong. Because I know the five liter was in the Monte Carlo. This didn't look up the Buick specs. So Hot Wheels has done this. Johnny Lightning, um, Green Light. Well, Green Light does Monte Carlo, but the Turbo, the Regals, really only a few. And so far, I like the M two body the best. Um, separate um, mirrors and all that, but but what, what what's hard to do on these cars is not necessarily the front grill or the doghouse. It's really this roof profile. 
there's always been issues with these roof profiles. Either they're too chopped or um, this area is not detailed enough. So M2 took the time. They made a nice thin casting right here with that formal roof. Very squared up. Car is not too narrow. So a lot of the cars that are like this were too narrow too. That was another issue. So like the Johnny Lightning one especially. So this is awesome. I like this car a lot. They had trouble figuring out how they want to do the uh, headlight treatment. Uh, it's separate buckets. There's no glass in there, but it looks great, especially looking at a magnification. Separate bumper looks good. We just, you know, I almost feel like I'm going to take some acetone, clean this up, and then put a little white paint there. We don't really need the blackout treatment that heavy. Um... But it, but it does have to be blacked out, and then we'll fix this. I don't know what they were thinking with that. It's supposed to be a sharp angle right there with a little lens. So that's a tough detail to get. Uh, but I think it could be come out with a little paint detail in the right places. So I do like this car. Let's see if we can get this hood open. These cars have been pretty tough with the hoods. Let's see if I can get it. Yeah. So nothing crazy. That again, that can be detail painted if you wanted it to, but there you go. And the interior is really nice. So this is cool. The bench seat car, which I like how they did that. So bench seat car, and then this one, you know, obviously it's got the but it's got a console, so with the stock um dash and, and steering wheel. Because they had, the turbos had the uh, little sport steering wheel on them. The little three spoke. So I love the roof profile on these. They're good cars. Uh, hopefully they do old Cutlass. Because old Cutlass would be really good. You know, everybody's done the Monte Carlo and stuff. But the Cutlasses need some love. Um, they outsold, I believe the Cutlass, the, the two-door, outsold the other two. The Monte and the, um, and the Buick, actually. So... I think it I think it actually in die cast form probably needs to to be done. Hopefully they do the the later model. People like that later model with the Euro headlights, but I could take I don't care if even if it's the early early ones, they look cool. Okay, this is a Cadillac. Now Green Light knows that Autoworlds they've been doing these Cadillacs for a minute. So Greenlight started doing Cadillacs and now they have the seventy six Eldorado front wheel drive car. So let's take a look at that. First, what I saw is that True Romance thing uh, with the pink one, but I didn't buy that. This one is a Bicentennial 76 model, which Cadillac did do this car as a as a tribute car. It had the um, pinstripe, which they've done, so red and blue pinstripe. I took this tire off. I shouldn't have, and I did not. I, ha I can put um, flat clear on these tires to prevent that from coming off, so I might buy another one of these. <laughs> But, um, unfortunately, uh, flexing the tire chipped off the white wall, so lesson learned. Um, but I think I can prevent that from happening next time when I uh, adjust for that. I should be able to clear coat that. So, separate bumpers, the, the, the uh, roof line is really good, and so is the windshield. So, if we look at the Auto World... I got pretty much all the Eldorados, but picked the uh, the red one. Back this up. So you can see. Let's look at this. So Auto World's got an opening hood, and look how much bigger Auto World looks. But you can see Green Light's got a little bit more detail um, that comes to light with their separate grill that they can chrome. It's not silver. Of course, you got the opening hood with all that stuff in there too. But um, I like, you know, green lights, wheels, and tires look a little big, but they were big on the car. So you can see Auto World, very elegant casting as well. Um, but this one's got that little bit sharper detail to it, so it's kind of a toss-up. It's always a trade-off, you know. One one might do one thing better than the other, but then. 
the overall shape you might like better. I, I, I'm feeling this one a little bit just because of the stance it gives. It's huge. Now, I think Greenlight's going to be doing a hardtop car. Definitely the front looks a lot better on this, though. When you look at these caddies, um, one of the things that stands out, they're wide, but they also have that, and they Greenlight got this, that front bumper really sticks out. So do the, the spears in the front. It's a little bit more muted. See how shallow that bumper is on this car? It really is a big bumper on that. So oh, there's a lot to like with Greenlight on this car. They also tooled new tires, which will also look on the Thunderbird. So I have that too. So I like these tires. These tires definitely can be for trucks. So I might bit more of these cars because we look at the sidewall detail. This will look really good on a three-quarter ton truck or a half ton. So hopefully we can get to do that soon. But I recommend this. This is a cool car. Um, they also didn't put the Cadillac crests uh, very well in the wheel, as you can see. Look at that. They're all over the place. I almost feel like painting it white over that and um, just putting a black dot there or something like that to make it look like it's a caddy crest. I don't know. Maybe I'll just leave it alone. All right, Cadillac. We looked at that. Now, one more. I forgot. Let's look at that Thunderbird. Uh, I don't know where the... Um, card art for this went, but... Well, here's the Cadillac card art. I don't think we looked at the caddy. Oh, let me back this up. GM, all the manufacturers basically were going bonkers and doing these special edition cars. Easy way to make profit, basically. You can kind of charge a little bit or make it a package and just do nominal things to the vehicle. So <laughs> this is basically almost like a design study. This is supposed to be the Crow's car from the movie um but greenland's like oh we can do all this stuff to this casting so this is like everything you can do to it have a you know a different hood with the blower you can have the lake pipes on it you can have a push bar but moving that all aside uh the casting is very nice it's a very nice casting this is a funny thunderbird so it's a it's an interesting model year to, to do the, these mid-year cars, which the Continental, I think in Mark IV or Mark V, they shared the platform with this car for a time. And then it went down to a Torino car because Thunderbird was on a Lincoln. They were kind of doing it, and then they kind of split. Uh, yeah, Mark V was its own car. This was on the Mark IV, I believe. So kind of similar, kind of cool car. Taillights separate for this one. Um, headlights are painted in, which is fine. Greenlight did this as a uh, molded piece with the body, so it's not like the Crown Vicks where it's a uh, plastic that kind of looks funny when they join it. So I like that they went back to the full casting. Interior looks really good. It's got that big, tough seats that in there. Thunderbird emblem. So I kind of, the uh, car's a little nuts for me, so I almost didn't get it, but I knew that this was the first release of this casting, and uh, we got to take a look at it. And and the Hollywood line is, is the cheapest line of all the green lights. Um, they always usually come in under $6 uh, if you go to the right place. So it's good to get cars. Sometimes they're not necessarily painted the way you want, but for parts especially if you need tires and wheels they're always good ones to pick up so there's our thunderbird usually it's had like 400 v8s in them with three speed automatics i think that was the biggest uh or like 460s probably too um so yeah that's kind of common that's the early 70s 73 car i believe yeah so in 72 they looked a little bit crazier with the but the bigger uh front end beak 70 to 72 73 they kind of calmed them down um, now they look like that. All right. Let's look at, uh, one more car. And I gotta find a package. Here we go. All right. So, Kaido House. I'm new to the Kaido House. I only got a couple of them so far. Said I really didn't care, but they're cool. So I started with the Silverado and 
and I got the NSX, which is amazing, the red one. Now I got the yellow. And I really like the yellow because there's no graphics on it. It's just a solid, straight car. Let's take a look at the package here real quick. The car's out of it already, but show you guys what's what's in there. Here's our some of our stuff right there. Of course, Honda Motor Company licensed car. Nice box. You know, these aren't really that much more money than a regular Mini GT, but when you pay the extra money, it's worth it. You get a really nice anodized base that goes all through. I took this car apart. I had to because this one, um, by everything was fine. It's just the, the the they pushed the wheels on too quickly to the axles, so they were all crooked. So I had to take them all apart and redo everything. Um, but they have perfect backspacing. You can see the rims line up perfectly with the body. So it's really not. Um, the engineering on this car is really good. June and I, like they talked about, you know, he left the Hot Wheels team, whatever, and he kind of made cars on his own terms. And um, one of the cool things he brought to the line was its ability to roll like a Hot Wheels. These cars, you know, as long as the axles are on straight, which mo all of them I had so far, even most Mini GTs, yes. This one just, for some reason, a little crooked. But we got that handled. It's not a problem. Because the precision of the casting and the way it fits is, is, is all there. So just getting my little part done, we got it handled. Opening headlights. And I got to see the mechanisms for this. It's very nice. It's got a huge post that hangs down from here on a, on a rod. And then there's a thing under this hood that um, screws in. And then is held in with a clip and a rod. And then the post comes right down here. So it's a simple but elegant design. And it's robust. Works really well. And then we have, of course, our my favorite left-hand drive. So we got that in there with the Honda brow. Bucket seat. And then we got that really nice Honda engine. So, six cylinder. It's very fiddly. I'd never open these. I'd rather just have them closed. They're plastic, so you don't want to jack them up. A little bit different looking than our red car back there. I think the red car's got a little bit more detail on it. Yeah, it's like a, uh, the valve cover is red with the silver engine. And this one's a little bit stall red. A little more stock looking. Um, wheels are the same. They're just all black. So black barrels, um, black wheels. I'm trying to get this to focus. There's a lot of background in there. Hold on. This paint's actually not flat yellow. It's metallic. It's got a uh, pearl in it. So... It's cool. I think there's just enough Tampa work on that door. Yeah. So we got NSX here too. That's really cool. And then down there. And then they did put a brand on the tires. So unfortunately, when you take these cars apart, uh, you have to take the rear splitter off, or the diffuser, or whatever you want to call it. So this had to be come off. Now, the tailpipes are glued to the metal chassis, and then the, the diffuser is glued to the tailpipes. So they don't use crazy glue, like not, not uh, glue that's like super crazy uh, stiff. So you can get on there and, and do real careful, but... If you don't feel comfortable. But I, I did need to open the car up because the way I was setting the axles and the wheels up uh, and the glue I was using, uh, I had to make sure that it was freewheeling. And to do that, I had to do it and take it apart. They usually do a drop-in axle style, not um, pushed on. So it's it's just better to set the car up that way. And and the chassis sits perfectly against the body. You can see the the height on both sides is identical. There's no... Um, one side is is down more than the other. 
So, and it just, it's an awesome car. It really rolls great. It's got the stretch tire look, so not my favorite on that end. I'd rather have a square tire, but it's okay. It's set up for that. You can see the barrel is just flush with the fender, and then the tire sits inside of it. So it's set up for that, so that's why we got to leave the car that way because that's how we get that car running. And it looks awesome with the red anodized. This one, you can see how busy it is compared to this one. So just cool stuff. Really, really cool. Well, we did a quickie here. Not too many cars, but we had a few, few good ones. More to come. Um, I got 124 scale we'll probably want to look at. So hopefully we get a look at that soon. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody's uh, finding the cars they're looking for and not getting too frustrated out there. Everybody just take a breath and kind of take your time. They'll come. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope thanks for the new subscriptions and the thumbs up and the comments. It helps the channel grow so we can do more of these more often. As always, more to come. Thanks for watching. Till next time.